Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Hamdan kathiran tayiban mubarakan fihi Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Dear brother and sister We are continuing again insyaAllah On the topic of the power of syukur Now the issue that I like to share with you About the power of syukur Is also about the free time that I've discussed In the early episode Is about Now, how can we make use of our free time to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is getting involved in activities that please Allah. Like helping the poor, helping the needy, spend more time with the right group of people to think about how to call people back to Allah. We are not righteous sometimes. When human, nobody is perfect. But we are thankful to Allah. Allah knows that we are human. He created us. He knows we have a lot of our weak point. He knows that we are not perfect. And He always opened the door of Tawbah. MashaAllah, we are so blessed. After committing sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened the door of Tawbah for us to repent to Him sincerely and He is ready to forgive us. It's a ni'mah. But of course, I'm not here to encourage people to do more sin, no. I'm here just to remind us that none of us is perfect. We should accept who we are. That what the Prophet ﷺ have mentioned early, that Every one of us who have been human, we commit sins here and there, whether minor or major, whether it's a secret sin or an open sin. But Allah loved among the sinners are those who repent to him so it is a nikma yeah, to have Allah the Almighty who is so merciful so forgiving so it's very important for us to grab the opportunity to thank Allah for his blessing his mercy and also for his forgiveness now how do you thank Allah for his forgiveness don't take things for granted again Don't keep on committing sins day in, day out. And then ask Allah to forgive you. And again, you commit again and again. That shows that you are not thankful to Him anymore. You are misusing the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should develop yourself, become a better person. This is something that we should reflect in. The same go to the free time that I mentioned early. A lot of our young people, they have a lot of energy, but they do not know how to use their energy to please Allah. So one of the things that you can engage the children example, make sure you enroll them in healthy activities. Sports maybe, gym maybe, as long as they build the body and they honor the right of the body, take good care of their body, eat the right food, drink the right drinks, and inshallah, when they are strong, they use their strength, their energy to help the poor, the needy, the elders. Alhamdulillah. Because the Prophet loved people who are strong physically, mentally, and spiritually. You must engage them so that they are free from drugs. They are free from all the negative activities. Because We take things for granted. We thought that it's up to the children to choose. To all the parents we know, we have a duty towards our children. Be thankful that Allah gave us children. You have a daughter, make sure that your upbringing is she become a righteous daughter. And what should we do when we have a good daughter? Make sure that they learn the Quran, They know the meaning of the Qur'an, they act upon the Qur'an, and they share the Qur'an with other people. Make sure they understand the sunnah of the Prophet, so that they will act accordingly, and so that Allah will bless them. And make sure that inshallah, after they become righteous children, we also have to make sure that we look for a righteous man for them. We cannot just marry our daughter to any guy. Example, 
if we do not want our children to get involved in drugs, the habit of smoking, then we must make sure that the future in law is a righteous man, a man who is free from drug, a man who is free from smoking, cigarette, or cigars, or shisha. We know this is not good for our health, but if we are not careful, as long as she is married, that means we are not thankful that Allah has given us righteous children. You have a righteous daughter, but you mesh her with some guy who are not righteous. Just because maybe he's a rich guy from a noble family, but you forget the conduct, the akhlaq of this guy or this man that you are going to offer your daughter to him. That means you are not thankful to Allah for having a righteous daughter. So if you are thankful, you make sure that you match her with the right kind of man, the right husband, so that this husband will take good care of your daughter. And he is going to love her, protect her, honor her like how we parents love our daughter and honor her and respect her. The same goes to the son. If you have a righteous son, you must make sure that a righteous son is a son who loves Allah, who loves Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and they always try their best to follow all the command and stay away from all that is forbidden from Allah and the Rasul وسلم, and also who are very dutiful to the parent. You have a right son, alhamdulillah. You're happy with the son. But sometimes you are not careful. You underestimate what is going to happen to your son. So you just married him to any woman or any girl. And now he is paired with a non-righteous lady. Where this girl may corrupt him, may change yeah, all his good conduct from being kind to other people to be selfish. Just think of himself and the family. From people who always have time to go to the mosque, the masjid to perform prayer, now he has no time. Most of the time, shopping, shopping. This is not good. I'm not saying that you cannot go for shopping, yes. But you must make sure that everything is balanced. Now this is how you show their gratitude that Allah has given you a righteous daughter, Make sure that they have a righteous partner, righteous son, so that he is matched with the righteous woman who is going to become your in-law and his wife. So that the future generation, our grandchildren, will be righteous grandchildren. This is something that we have to look into it seriously today. Because what is happening today, brother and sister, we leave everything to our children. We thought that after giving them education, after bringing them up, give them a career, it's up to them. No. It's our main responsibility to show our appreciation to Allah upon what He has given us. A good daughter, a good son. Now, we must make sure that their future partners are also righteous people. Now, if you do that, inshallah, brothers and sisters, I do believe, and we all will see the result, that inshallah, you have a healthy family who will live in harmony and peace. And that will help the future generation. Now, the same go to the knowledge. If you are thankful to Allah with the knowledge that Allah has given you, what should you do with the knowledge? Keep it to yourself. Misuse your knowledge to exploit the weakness of the ignorant people? No. If you are thankful to Allah with the knowledge that Allah gives you, then you must make sure that the knowledge that you have is a knowledge that benefits you, number one. Number two, the knowledge that you can benefit other people. You must teach other people what Allah has given you. 
Because if you do not share the knowledge with other people, the knowledge that Allah has given you, you have betrayed Allah. And you have betrayed your friend too. Because knowledge is amana. It didn't belong to us. It belonged to Allah. And it's a gift from Allah to us. And it's for us to share with other people. Knowledge is a nikmah. Please remember, brother and sister, knowledge is a nikmah. And inshallah, we'll see you after the short break. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. We were talking about a topic just now about the shukur, and also we did stop before the short break about talking towards how to make sure that we understand the concept of shukur. Now, we did discuss about knowledge. A lot of people have knowledge today, alhamdulillah. Well, what happened to the knowledge that they have? They become judgmental. They are using the knowledge to attack another person. This is not good knowledge. By right, knowledge is not for us to look down upon other people. And that's why the Prophet wasallam remind us about the nikmah of ilm to the extent that Allah said that Allah will raise up the status of a person who believe in Allah and a person who have knowledge to a better status than the normal people. Now knowledge is very important in our life but in the same time look at the blessing of Islam. Look at the beautiful teaching of Prophet Muhammad Even when you talk about knowledge, even when you want to seek knowledge, the Prophet always remind his Ummah to ask Allah, to be humble to Allah, and ask him, Allahumma zidni ilman nafi'ah. O oh Allah, increase in me knowledge that benefit me that benefit all of us, not just any knowledge, but a knowledge that really benefit us, a knowledge that get us closer to Allah, a knowledge that can increase our Iman, a knowledge that can purify our inner self, our intention, our heart, our mind, but not just any knowledge. A lot of people don't understand the concept of knowledge to today. And that's why the Prophet also said, ask Allah, وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ إِلْمْ لَا يَنْفَعْ O Allah, I seek refuge in you from any knowledge that do not benefit me. When the knowledge do not benefit us, this knowledge will not benefit other people. And this is important because a lot of people, alhamdulillah, they love to seek knowledge. But the knowledge that they seek is knowledge that do not benefit them. They waste their time, they waste their money, they're spending on knowledge that sometimes destroy them and also cause destruction to other people. Look at the beauty of this religion. Every single thing that we want to do, number one, we must be grateful and be thankful to Allah first. Number two, when you are thankful, make sure that you use everything that Allah has given you that is halal and taiba to serve Allah, to please Him. Because Allah said, Wa amma bi ni'mati rabbika And ayah that we always recite, we may understand the meaning, but we do not know how to apply this ayah in our daily life. So it's important for us to have the right understanding. Then Allah has said, Whatever nikmah that Allah has given us, that it is a blessing from Allah, it's an amana from Allah, that we should show gratitude and be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making use of all the good things that Allah has given us and share it with other people, not just for ourselves. Don't be selfish. Don't be greedy. And also, Brothers and sisters, remember, knowledge is not for us to judge other people now. Knowledge is for us to share with other people. 
today I've seen through my humble experience traveling around the globe, around the world, talking to people, Muslim, not yet Muslim, young, old, and those corporate people, a lot of people, they don't really understand the concept of knowledge. They become very selfish. And when they have some knowledge, they become very, very judgmental. Keep on judging people, telling people, yes, you're wrong, you're wrong, they forget about themselves. There is a saying among the Chinese people that if a person always use this index finger and pointing, you are wrong, you are bad, you are not good enough. One finger pointing out, three finger pointing backward. Now, this is a reminder. Sometimes there's a lot of signs that Allah has given us, but we don't understand. We don't have the knowledge about the signs. One finger pointing out, telling people that you are wrong, you are not doing the right thing, but in the same time, three finger is pointing back to himself or herself. Now this reminds us, before you want to judge other people, use the knowledge that Allah has given us to judge yourself so that you can improve yourself better. So that inshallah, by doing that, we will help ourselves and help others. We know that not everybody is perfect, the same go to us. If we are not perfect, we cannot expect perfection from others. So we have to show mercy to each other. The right knowledge will give us this feeling that we are not supposed to be judgmental. We are not here to just judge people, but we are here to share with each other. If you know that you are so right and the other party is so wrong, you are confirmed that they are wrong. Not because you think they are wrong, it's because Allah said so. It's because the Prophet said so. Meaning, wrong and right according to Islam is not based on how you feel, how I feel, or how we feel, but it's based on what Allah says is right, is right. What Allah says is wrong, is wrong. What Prophet Muhammad says is right, then is right. What Prophet Muhammad says is wrong, is wrong. This is our reference. Not how I feel, I may be wrong. Sometimes I may dislike something. Just being a human, I may dislike a lot of things. But what I dislike maybe is not haram. It's not wrong at all. So we cannot say to other people, it's wrong. No. There are food that I don't like to eat, I cannot say this haram. If you have the right knowledge, brother and sister, you will feel it. That you are not here to judge anybody, but to share your knowledge with other people. And if you can't share the knowledge because you don't have the skill in sharing the knowledge with other people, then what can we do, brother and sister? At least, mashallah, make prayer, make dua, be humble to Allah. We know the one that is going to change the heart of the people is not me, it's not you, it's not because of the knowledge that we have, it's because of Allah. Allah controls the heart of every one of us and he is the only one who can move the heart of the people not you not me but our duty is just to remind each other and the right knowledge will give us this spirit that we are not here to make any judgment so if you know that your brother or your sister is wrong think of how is the best way that you can approach them and advise them and bring them back to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to my way or your ways to my opinion and your opinion no but back to the word of Allah the command of Allah the wahyu not the nafs See, uh, my nafs may be right my nafs may be wrong my opinion may be right my opinion may be wrong too may be worse than what the other people is doing so the best thing is to be humble and make sure that our value is just by the book of Allah, the Quran, 
the final revelation from Allah to humanity that will never go wrong from the day it was revealed today until the end of the world and also what the Prophet have told us because he was protected by Allah he's the last messenger of Allah he's saying it's very very important for us to understand and the Prophet have never been judgmental to anybody even he knows somebody is doing something very wrong but he was not going to judge them immediately but he will give them time to change he will educate them and he will pray for them so what is happening to us today only Allah knows brother and sister Allah have given us the knowledge but see what the knowledge have made for us the little knowledge I don't say that we are very learned compared with the great Imams before us Abu Hanifa, Mali, Shafi, Hanbali, Rahimallah, Alayhim, Jami'an, Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmizi, Abu Daud all these great scholars, they are not just mental but today, the little knowledge that we have we are starting to attack each other humiliate each other we are trying to create a lot of fitna to each other causing a lot of unrest blaming each other what is going on? This is a sign that we are not thankful to Allah because if you are thankful, brother and sister, the knowledge that Allah gives you, you will never make use of it to judge other people. But you will try your best yeah, to remind each other. Yeah, you try your best to convey the message to others, brothers and sisters. Don't be judgmental to anybody, please brother and sister have mercy to yourself so that Allah will show his mercy upon all of us if we conceal the mistake of any Muslim the Prophet promised us that Allah will help us to conceal our own weaknesses in this dunya and also in Akhir see the benefit of being kind to each other the benefit to be kind to each other the little that we can do here to forgive each other to cover the weakness of each other in return Allah is going to conceal and cover our weaknesses here until the hereafter may Allah bless us may Allah guide us may Allah shower his mercy to all of us Amin Ya Rabbul Alamin وبالله توفيقي والأقل دعوانا والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته